Hello, hello, this is Anthony, and I'm here to talk about a Linux di distribution that I think you should check out and maybe play around with. I think it's a little bit underrated, and I think there is a good reason to try it. So, what is Alpine Linux? Alpine Linux is mostly meant to be run in a Docker or virtual environment to provide a really tiny, tiny, tiny service or something like that. It's very resource efficient. It boots up well, it's quick, it's fast, it updates quickly, you know, changing things is quick. The only drawback is you kind of have to figure everything out on your own and slash or read the wiki and troubleshoot. So some, some simple stuff like, you know, if config, you need to configure everything out of the box, but, you know, bear in mind there are some setup scripts that you can check out. So if we go over to the wiki, we'll just pop this right open. But first, what we want to do is we want to download it. And we're going to want the x86 64-bit. Most likely, we're going to be doing this on a QEMU slash KVM, which is through Vert Manager. It's through that whole virtualization stack. And then we're going to want the GPG key. We're also going to put that in the downloads. And then we're going to download their GPG public key and import that using uh, GPG. So now that that's done, Let's head over to downloads and we want we want this. So GPG import. I don't know. Oh GPG, it's because I'm using uppercase. There we go. Okay. Now we, what we want to do is run an LSL and we want gpg verify and we want the signature first so just copy and paste that and then the actual file and we are going to get a good signature but you know it's not going to be trusted and we want to check this fingerprint you know against this one um, just as good measure but as we can see it all checks out so what we're going to do is we're going to open vert manager And uh, we're going to get it opened up here, and we're going to add a new virtual machine. We're going to so this is Vert Manager. So you know your experience with uh, either it's probably going to be your likely options are going to be VirtualBox, VMware, you know, you know something in that neighborhood. So just kind of loosely follow along with what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate the ISO. We got to grab it from the downloads and we want well see the problem is as I believe it's because we don't have permission to access it on I guess so let's go ahead and just create another folder for it documents let's do a new folder let's do VM templates and let's go back over to downloads. We're going to uh, take it out of here, move it over here. Done. All right, now let's try this again. So let's add a path. We want to browse documents, VM templates, open. VM templates, pool. OK, cool. Pool. So let's check this out. And then we can choose the volume. There we go. Okay, forward, and let's just give it something to start with. And this is not the exact uh, megabit conversion, so you're going to want to do that on your own. So forward, let's create a uh, disk. Let's just make it 50. You know, I'll, it'll demonstrate adding a desktop environment as well. So Alpine, finish, I believe. This is what we want. We got the regular NAT going here. So I'm going to pull this up through here, and I believe, uh, so yeah, the, hello, okay, <laughs> we messed up, <laughs> root, okay, so yeah, the default is just root with no password. So what we're going to want to do is, let's head over, let's uh, minimize this, I need my cursor, come here, give me my cursor, there, okay. And we're going to go over to the wiki. So we're going to click installation. And we are going to scroll down. And we are going to do setup-alpine. So let's do that real quick. So it's a script. 
that is just baked in uh, by default. It's very handy. Please use it unless you want to go through the pain of doing it yourself. And we're just going to hit enter through a lot of this. We'll, we'll be fine with uh, localhost, eat zero, DHCP. Uh, do you want? Nope, I don't. Let's just use DHCP and our NAT connection to the virtual uh, interface. And for the password, of course, don't use password. Please, not good. And for time zones, you can use question mark. And for me, it's going to be US. You can do it again. You need mountain. And a proxy, nah, we're good. We don't need a proxy. And it's choosing the fastest mirror for us by default. We we can do refresh, etc. But let's just choose one. Uh, do we want to set up another user for this? Let's just say no. Doesn't really matter. Open SSH. Uh, we want to prohibit the password. Do you want to enter an SSH key? No. Not really, because we're not. This isn't a server. This is we're gonna set this up as a desktop just to show you how far you can go with this, because you can take this very far. There's just some limitations. And I'll explain them. Uh, so which disk do we want to use? Well, we want to use our virtual disk, or you know, if we were doing this on hardware, we'd do it on our hardware disk, and it would come up as a hardware disk. And then, would you? How would you like to use it? So you can. There's a ton of options. You can look through the wiki, but. The default option, no encryption, just a boot for the kernel, uh, a root partition for home directory and everything underneath it, and swap and things like that. We just want sys. That is the most standard. And by default, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say no, so we need to say yes to erase the disks. And then after this, is, we're just going to wait for this to be done. This is all just lightning fast. You're going to be shocked how fast this is. But everything gets done quickly. It's really highly resource efficient. It cuts out a lot of, um, you know, and I don't necessarily come from this opinion. I don't necessarily think that uh, certain technologies are more inefficient. I don't really fall into a camp. I really don't care. I'm going to use Linux, and I'm going to use all the Linux. You know, so if somebody asks me what Linux I use, I use all. So... As uh, you know, it's nice to learn instead of falling into a specific category. All right, now we need to reboot. The setup is done. The disk is installed. That was awfully quick, wasn't it? You know, and, and part of the reason of that is because Alpine Linux is terribly small, terribly, terribly small. Root, and we type in our totally secure password. And the first thing we're going to want to do is apk update and apk upgrade. But you can combine this into one line and I'll show you what that looks like. You know, now that I think of this. Huh. We're just going to do an APK update. Can we, can we get to the internet? Let me just make sure. Hmm, something seems fishy. Hmm, okay. Uh, well, clearly something didn't get set up as I intended. So, you know what? I think I know what it is. I'm going to guess it is our, um, then let's check the settings here. I didn't think we would run into issues, but you know, you never know. So edit connection details, virtual networks, it's active. So what's going on? What is going on here? One nine two one six eight one two two one six three. Hmm. Okay, Google's working. <laughs> um, so, why are we running into issues with this? Okay. 
Okay. Warning, updating, temporary error. Oh, I wonder if something's going on with the repo. I wonder if they're adding something or they took it down for something. I don't know. You know, what a coincidence that I'd be working on Alpine Linux at the same time they're trying to work on stuff. Anyways, <laughs> we just went down an unexpected rabbit hole, but uh, let's see if we can get this up and running in the way we want. So we did the setup Alpine script. So that's that's num step number one. So a lot of a lot of Alpine is done through scripts, which you know in a way it's going to save the working sysadmin a lot of time. Not everyone, you know, and I'm of the opinion, you know, if you don't need to reinvent the wheel twice, you know, you don't need to spend all day trying to set something up from scratch, you really shouldn't have to. That's kind of the uh, camp I come from. So what we're looking for now is post-installation details. So we got further instructions. So uh, first, and actually I have a feeling that that might be part of our problem, possibly. So we need to enable the community repository if we're going to add stuff that they don't include in the main repository. And for that, we need something like Vim, and we don't have that. So we need to add apk add Vim. And while this is doing that, I'm going to switch back over here. I'm going to go back a page. And you need to set up man pages. Uh, you need to, you know, you, you literally need to set everything up yourself. But don't worry, it's all here. It's all here, and it's usually very well documented. The only time that you would run into issues, and I will try to clear it up as best as I can, is when you try to install desktop environments. And that's where this comes in handy. And I wish they would include this information you know, just right out of the gate, but setup dash xorg dash base. So kind of what we need to do with that, let's scroll through here, set up desktop environments and window managers. There's lots of options here. Um, one thing that I've seen that is really cool, you can get kind of into the rising scene and you can do things like DWM, BSPWM, i3, awesome. You can do stuff like that. And I really like that, but I have no interest really in doing that because this is a virtual machine. We don't really care all that much. So now that we have Vim, uh, interesting, do we have Vim? No, we do not. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know. Um, um, Two errors. So clearly something's going on. Um, HTTP downloads content delivery network. It's probably what that stands for. It's dot alpine dot, dot alpine linux dot org alpine v3 main. So it's the main branch. What's going on with the main branch? Huh. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. There. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. APK. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then let's go through and start because we should have Vim now. We do. All right. So we need to edit and enable our community repositories. So in order for that to happen, we need to go to etc. APK repositories. And what that's going to look like is vim slash etc slash apk and repositories. And we're going to do our tab complete to save our sanity. Enter. Uh, delete the last comment so it is no longer a comment, right? Um, okay, go back to the command mode. Okay, so now that so you can see at the end here we have main and community. We just uncommented community. So in order to get out of that, press escape, press colon, W, Q, and then we want to do an APK update. Let's get a clear line there. And we want APK upgrade just for sanity to see. Okay. 
All right, now that that's done, that's out of the way, now we can start getting into the setup script. And really what they don't tell you over here is, uh, so let's go back a page and let's go back another page. Um, it might even be back another page, to be honest with you. So yeah, so you can do tons of stuff. You can do Alpine wall, which is a type of firewall. You can do, uh, this is actually the most niche one that I've ever seen, but telephony. You can do a PBX switch, like a voice switch, like seriously, you know, that is incredibly cool. You know, of course you could probably do it on any Linux distribution, but the fact that they go out of their way to put together um, specific instructions um, you know we're looking at a very very thorough uh, um, use cases here you know and I'm sure you can carry this over into other distributions of Linux if you wanted to which is kind of cool so the opportunities are literally like pretty much endless um, I just think it's really so yeah we need to go one more time uh, do, 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 set up xorg base that's the one we want so let's let's start with that command set up xorg base and it does exactly as it sounds it sets up the base environment for xorg and the problem is, is if you try to uh, you know you go through and enable everything by hand and you um, go through and you do everything manually as the documentation instructs you to do um, you're going to have trouble starting your X server. It's not going to be in your path. Um, all kinds of random issues like that. So um, what we do is we specify the script, and then we specify the rest of this, and I'll show you why. So if we look at XORG base, you put the additional packages to install after the script. This is super important. Yep, yeah, so... It installs other necessary packages that you're not going to think of when you're going through the uh, desktop environment um, uh, configuration guide. So let's let's do that now. So we need to get XFCE4, which will download a whole ton of files and uh, stuff that will that make up the the base of XFCE. So we need XFCE4 dash terminal because otherwise we'll have to switch to a different run level and that's not fun uh, in this case and then we want xfce4 dash screensaver and according to the documentation according to the wiki let me see if I can get this there it goes okay xfce4 screensaver is necessary quote just for locking screen for screen locking after inactivity with no screensaver enabled. So there's a functionality here, you know, that uh, is almost kind of necessary. I mean, it, it, it can be annoying to just have a lot of bloat, but one thing that I do like about Alpine is there's re it's really a blank canvas, and I like that. But it's more of an enterprise blank canvas, whereas Arch Linux is more in the realm of a hobbyist blank canvas you know they, i mean they just they build this thing pretty much for the environment although i will preface it does say non-commercial on the front page so you're really you really need to take that you know kind of at your own risk and as you can see we're, it's enabling when we run this it's enabling the community repositories but we've already done that so i mean it's it's just being redundant i guess you know that's that's what this script does because it needs to grab all these things but that's why this script is so important because you're going to miss the configuration of some of these things that you only really need to do on alpine so that's why this setup script is so important and that's why when you click into the different um desktop environments in here it, they really need to mention it. It really shouldn't be just APK add. You really need to do the setup. And I don't believe that it's mentioned in here. And I mean, yeah, so it's down here at the bottom, you know, Alpine setup scripts see also. So, I mean, there's really not much of a hint that you're going to run into issues. And that's what I was struck, struggling with for um, a good while is... I was just running into issues because you know there's certain things you need to do beyond just a headless server distribution you know
there's things that you have to do that um, you you wouldn't normally think of. And we're just kind of waiting for, at, at this point, we're waiting for the main repository to come in and so we can grab these items. And it just looks like, I don't know, it's down or they're working on it. I don't know. But it's it's kind of struggling, which is interesting. So we just got to wait and be patient. And you may even want to go as far. There's instructions in here for um, getting stuff set up out of the box and enabling stuff, enabling services. And we probably still want to do that. You know, so starting on boot. Things that need to start on boot uh, are kind of important. So <laughs> we're just stuck waiting for this setup script. Seriously? There it goes. Okay. I don't know what that was about, but whatever. All right. No XFCE terminal. That's what we're getting messed up on. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, so we need we made a typo. That's okay. <laughs> XFCE versus XFCE4. You know, it's easy to overlook that. But look at this. Look at how quickly it's grabbing everything from the internet. You know, we're downloading a desktop environment. That's not necessarily like downloading like a calculator or something like that. That's it's kind of it's kind of a big deal. It's kind of cool that you can just get stuff like for example, Nope, not in the. So if we do, so, you know, L LSBLK, and this is what I'm talking about, how it doesn't have all these normal programs that you would normally have built in. And so we need to add it. So add, APK add LSBLK. Done. You now have LSBLK. <laughs> you know, this is awesome. I love it. Um, it's just very, very thought out. So. We want to enable dbus on boot. So we want rc update add dbus. Okay, cool. Enabling udev, so we want to set up dash dev d udev. And then let me make sure that syntax makes sense. Set up dev d udev. Okay, that's that. Some other housekeeping items. We want to... If the package has been installed per the instructions above, the Light DM Display Manager may be started to log in to a new user. Yes, once after correct operation is verified, Light DM can be enabled to start up during boot. So that's what we're gonna do next. At this point, we can do start X, which will start the X server and boom here we are so let's that's fine remove power manager because we're not running on a laptop that's why it's not working um, so now we're not going to work worry about changing anything we're going to finish setting it up so we want rc update add light dm cool beans okay and yeah okay uh, allowing shutdown and reboot to enable users to shut down the machine or reboot the packages e login d and pull kit e login d need to be installed so that's what we're going to do now and i'm just going to move it over here we're going to do apk add e login e login d and pull kit e login d and we're going to get all that done the root is required to take effect. And now we need to reboot. And now at this point, we should get back to the login manager. Or the display or light. It's the light. What, we're, what I'm talking about here is we should be redirected to the um, light DM greeter. 
Yes, and we are. And we want root and our totally secure password. Not. Um, what else we got here? And so there's things like network browsing, right? So if, if you have like a bunch of network shares and stuff, let me get this big enough so you can see. But you're going to want to add all of this if you want stuff like that. For example, Fuse and SMB. SMB is important if that is something that you have. So, um, and then and there's stuff like privilege escalation within the GUI, right? Like if you want to be able to open something as a different user, you're not going to be able to do that out of the box. So what you need to do is follow these commands. Um, or start them manually. Yeah. Add elogin D to make him running. So let's just read through this real quick and make sure I'm giving you the correct information. It's not included in the game. Because, you know, because Alpine isn't, like, it's not meant for a desktop, but you can. That's what's so cool. So yeah, we need do as RC update add e login D. But we also have light DM. Um, and let's just do both. Uh, at least that's what my that's what my intuition is telling me. So we want do as do as is not found. It's sudo sudo is not found. Do I need to apk add do as? I guess I did. <laughs> okay, do as rc update. And I guess it's not really necessary because we've just been running RC update alone, but maybe do as is important. Maybe that's why they included it because there's just something they're not telling us. E login D operation not permitted. Let's try it without that. Yeah. Okay. So th there's just something going on. And then we want light DM as well. Change E login D for light DM and run the same command. That's what I will do light dm already installed in run level okay it's already done so <clears throat> there's some other interesting uh things happening here so by default xfce needs the add weta or add waita i don't know however you want to pronounce that icon theme otherwise some icons might be missing so to fix that apk add add waita add waita i don't know whatever you want to call it theme Okay, and start up. If the Xorg server seg faults in KVM KMU, then add the nomo D set, and that might be um, relevant to me because we're doing this in K KVM slash QEMU. So just take note of this. This is important, but for our sake, we're not going to do it. So <clears throat> if the panel, so yeah, this is just troubleshooting if you're dealing with um, problems, but and technically that missing icons thing we didn't need to do, but I'm going to do it anyways because I don't pay attention to icons and I don't know about icons and I don't know if there are any missing. So, you know, it's better to just handle that out of the gate before encountering that issue. And it, I mean, if it's already there, it's just going to overwrite that. So it's not a big problem. All right, so we got root. Now let's just do some general stuff that anybody would do. So we're gonna go into display 1920 by 1080 because that's our current resolution. Um, panel, panel preferences, you know, you know, the typical Linux getting it ready. And I mean, and you can replicate this process. It's just gonna depend on the desktop environment that you choose. You're gonna run into different issues. Like for instance, a year and a half ago, when I tried to do GNOME, um, I ran into problem problems. So, and see, that's the one thing that's annoying is like, okay, we've got these setup scripts in some areas, and we don't have them in others, and it's it's a little bit disorganized. Um, however, it it's it's doable. It's it's doable. I mean, you just you just got to know, and you got to have common sense. 
you know, a little bit. And if you can't figure it out, do some research and try to work with it and see if you can figure it out. Otherwise, just, you know, that that's just the desktop environment problem. That That's with Linux in general. Um, if you stick to basic projects that only use cl uh, CLI, you're likely going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Just know what you're getting yourself into, basically. So yeah, this, that's pretty much it. Um, there's not really a whole ton of stuff to look at. I mean, it's basic, basic, basic Linux. Um, and this is why you should set, set up another account, another user account that's added to the wheel group and can do do as or sudo or whatever you end up choosing. Um, otherwise, you'll get this error or warning, rather. If you were using the root account, you may harm your system. You know, right? It's not going to ask you twice before you right click and delete something. <laughs> you know? So just a, just a thought to keep in mind. But anyways, yep, that was that. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, this journey with me. And I hope this has inspired you to go ahead and look into this yourself as a potential option for uh, creating projects on your own. Because I think this is a highly underrated distribution. I don't say it used a whole ton. And I think it should be used more. I think it should be used more on hardware. I think it should be used more in Docker. I think it should be used more everywhere. Just, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have some limitations, like for example, you know, APK search, uh, uh, search right? We're going to search for Firefox. You know, Firefox is there, you know, so we can we can add Firefox, APK add Firefox, right? And then we're going to have Firefox, so that's awesome. But, uh, you know, it, you're just, you're limited to the types and numbers and kinds of applications. For example, uh, developers are not creating um, applications with Alpine in mind, usually as a desktop, because guess what? Not very many people actually use it as a desktop. I doubt anyone uses it as a desktop. And, uh, oh, we got the whole thing here. Okay. <laughs> but like, I'm scrolling through this and look at how quickly we're running through the alphabet here. There's just not a ton of packages. There's, there's pack, I mean, from a server perspective, there's a ton of packages. And if we look for LibreOffice, you know, it's there. Um, you know, right down here, it's there. It's just, you know, web browser, LibreOffice, a, maybe a calculator, you know. You're not going to game on this. Anything you want is going to be through FlatHub, uh, through a flat pack. So just be aware of that from the get-go. So you're going to have a lot of containerized applications, which, you know, there, there, there are security positives, you know, security benefits to that. You know, when you're, when you have a container like such as Flatpak or, you know, I'm not sure if it is Flatpak that has that, but, you know, and I'm looking through here at the features to see if that is part of the advertisement for Flatpaks, but I don't see it. But just generally, having everything containerized and controlled is is a way to keep things relatively secure and keep things from bouncing over one thing to the next, the next, the next, the next. You know, traditional Linux, um, everything generally, generally can talk to other things that are on your system. And there's no segmentation. There's no gap. So... You know, I, I see the per I see the point in Flatpak, but just know if you're using this as a desktop, you're only going to be using Flatpaks to get everything you want. So um, be okay with that if you're going to choose this. But anyways, that's all I have for you today. So thank you for watching. I appreciate the I I just I appreciate your your time, and I hope you've learned something new. Thank you so much.